I'm going to be looking at AI for good. So I thought we, we'd think about why AI for good. Obviously, it's, it's a little bit uh, obvious why we want to use AI for good. Um, Stephen Hawking, uh, Elon Musk, uh, Steve Wozniak all have talked about how AI can be used or misused depending on um, the way the way things move forward. And I think the, the big consideration issues when we're thinking about AI for good is we have to think about the impact of automation on the job market. It's one of the big worries of AI and it's one of the big worries around AI. Um, we Another worry people have about things going wrong with AI, AI is uh what happens if a computer achieves human level intelligence i do believe we're some way off that um at this point but it, it, it's a worry people have and obviously as we all know and one of the reasons we are here today is that ai and intelligent systems are are bursting onto the scene and growing and growing exponentially in their in their usage areas so that brings us to AI for good. Uh, lots of agencies and organisations recognise um, that there are issues with AI. We've seen uh, recent examples of that with the government's um, algorithm for, for A-level results and GCSE results that went horribly wrong because it was not programmed or tested on a wide enough data set and things like that. Um, but just think of, of of how we're thinking of how AI can go bad. We can see that autonomous weapons systems falling into the wrong hands could be a problem, and unintentional bias in 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 calculations are are popping up more and more. So how do we how do we combat that? Well. There are lots of current developments going on in areas for good AI. We have healthcare, disease and condition de detection, uh, lots of AI systems being used in the COVID-19 response. Um, in education, we have workshops aimed at understanding the impact of AI systems uh, and, and developing systems, generative systems to bring AI and creativity together for young people so that early on we can start to say listen you 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 have a responsibility with ai to make sure that that it is working for everyone um from a social perspective there are lots of, of systems i've got a couple of examples there safe chat which is my research area i'll talk to you more about but there are other things like domestic abuse detection systems um from a planetary perspective perspective, Microsoft are looking at biodiversity, climate change, agriculture and water systems to help uh, everybody on the planet to be able to have a biodiverse, stable climate uh, in which they can farm effectively. Uh, social care, robotic systems for, for individual care, um, apps for young people to promote sexual health. Um, and accessibility with automated smart home systems and seeing AI to help the visually impaired. Microsoft have developed a system of a talking camera to help visually impaired people. So that's just a, a very small snapshot of development areas for good AI that are happening today. I am responsible for teaching uh, AI to undergraduates at, at Sunderland University. And I always talk to the students about the research projects I'm working on and uh, at the moment uh, SafeChat is my primary research area which is a piece of software, well a software system that's being developed with a view to protect vulnerable users in online uh, real-time autonomous interventions. Uh, I'm working on a smart project which is funded by Google which is developing a social media research tool uh, so that uh, reporters can can use this software and be a lot more certain about the statistics around 
social media uh, posts and things like that. And it's all part of a bigger, bigger project to ensure that the news is accurate. Um, so I think that's a good use of AI. The KTP that I'm working on at the moment is on financial sector prediction, which is helping small to medium enterprises use probability uh, and, for and real time forecasting to help them manage their cash flow so that they they're obviously more successful in business and, and, and stay afloat. And I've been working with the health sector on a number of initiatives, uh, but mainly uh, around identifying patterns to automate wellness advice based on predictive uh, behaviour models. And, and, and all of those projects have an element of good within them. But I think what I really want to talk about is the safe chart, because I think that is the biggest um, area for that I uh, that I am currently working on. So SafeChat is a system that was designed to help children and young people and vulnerable people in the end uh, converse online in a safe a safer way. Uh, the internet is really important to young people, um, but there are highly publicised cases of children going missing or coming to heart harm as a result of interactions with strangers and sometimes their friends online. So um, in order to combat that, I, I was working to, to find a way around that because one of the most important issues that you have to consider is the privacy of a child. I don't want to stop children being able to have open, honest, frank discussions with their peers online. Uh, and I don't think it's a good idea, and research, as you can see on screen, supports the fact that this is not, not good for children. Uh, children need to develop their own emotional uh, sense uh, uh, and develop as people, so spying on them all the time is not the answer. Although I have to say, it was one of the first questions I ever get asked when I'm presenting this research is, will this allow me to spy on my child now? And the answer is absolutely not. Um, I looked at existing applications. And as you can see, um, none of the existing applications of, offered an automated or a real-time protective response. And all of them uh, relied on people being able to spy on their, their child or having to. And then if you have a look at while well, we're discussing motivations, uh, some of the numbers on the different applications. Um, originally, when I set out with my research, I was developing an application that children could be funneled to. And I quickly realised with the advent of things like Facebook, Skype, and on all of those different applications, and even thinking about gaming applications, we needed a system that would plug into these systems rather than be a separate system, because discourse can happen over one or multiple applications. And I think that was an important um, consideration for the system. So my hypothesis became a um, Basically, in order to provide a safe environment for children uh, in online settings, we need an automated, adaptable um, system to protect the privacy of our young people or vulnerable users and provide transparency of use. And that led me to start developing a safe chat multi-agent system to do that. So I realised an effective solution would have to block the transfer of personal information, detect elements of meetings in continuing discourse, which is over multiple applications in some cases, maintain a threat level for the existing uh, discourse, uh, block attempts at making meeting arrangements, report dangers to, to the users, and, and report any actions, system actions taken to the users and protect the privacy of the child. So in order to do that, I have a four agent, multi-agent system. Uh, I won't read through the, the jobs, but as you can see on screen, each agent has a particular job to do. 
in in the system and the system was developed in java and and uses uh FIPA's agent communication language so that all this, the agents can communicate with one another and, and maintain uh the threat level for each for each instance of discourse so the main job of uh of maintaining the threat is is done by the threat agent here here's the safe chat message throw uh flow so user one will log on uh the message will be captured and for forwarded initially to a profile agent which will check the user's details to make sure that uh, messages don't contain um, sensitive information. And then the message bounces around between the agents to be checked for, for different things. And that, that, um, that system worked quite effectively. Uh, here's a sequence diagram from the profile agent, which covers checking to see whether there's any personal information within that, that message. This is the threat agent sequence diagram. Um, and here we have divided a meeting uh, into three different parts. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but we have an intention, a location and a time. And we added a tense condition to see, to make sure people were talking about future events and not past events. Uh, future or present, sorry. And so as you can see, as we go through here, there's various different conditions the message has to go through. And if the message exceeds the threat level, then the message is blocked. And if the message is under the threat level, then the message is allowed through. So that's a pretty rudimentary look at how the system works, how it knows what a meeting uh, element, whether a meeting element is present or not was originally controlled via an ontology, which is a formal description of all the objects, rules and relationships within a particular domain of knowledge. And it worked well with the agents. It, it, once it had been created, it would have had to be added to, um, but it allows the agents to draw a reasoned and thought out response. To, to in a particular domain of knowledge. And this domain of knowledge was, was meeting arrangements. And I broke meeting arrangements down in the ontology. So here you can see we've got our intention, location and time. Uh, all linguistic elements of those were set in relationships. Um, so for example, an intention might be meet me, let's meet, see you at, let's go to come to the and then locations were broken down and these relationships between the, these elements have to be clearly defined for the ontology to work sorry and that's what it kind of looks like in implementation as you can see it gets pretty complicated pretty quickly but here we we if we don't set those relationships accurately then the ontology doesn't work and the agents can't then make an inferred decision. The first iteration of the system worked. Um, it was able to adapt. It was transparent to the user, but it did have issues in the fact that um, it wasn't as transparent as it could have been. Um, and uh, it carried a, a, a moderate computational, but a very high communication overhead. And the other issue with the ontology solution was that it would need to be updated constantly to ensure that it was accurate. So the current focus on the system then moved to uh, more machine learning probability models that could use anonymized historical chat feeds to inform a self-learning model for the system. Because the other thing we did was we tested the system under load and the overheads, whilst quite quite small on a one-to-one -one basis, by the time you had lots of users logging into different systems, the overheads became quite significant. And even checking messages gave a, a bigger overhead than, than was necessary. So uh, 
we 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 are now looking at a, a machine learning approach. We have done several experiments. We've looked at the different different specific mechanisms used in in meeting children or grooming children. We've looked at at different areas, and we're now at a point where we want to pre-train a system and then roll out tests. But again, the overheads are still pretty, pretty large. So what we're looking at, what we're considering now for the safe chat system are predator and victim profiles. So we will analyze activities and, um, and the way uh, people are talking to each other. We'll identify risk factors for both predator and victim. Uh, we'll use things like pro proximity locations. We we have already identified risk behaviours and there are pre-identified predatory behaviours. And the factors involved in continued discourse, so things like sentiment identifiers, uh, already identified criticism, isolationist, positive and negative reinforcement mechanisms. Uh, we'll look at meeting attempts and, and location risk levels. And through building uh, a pre-trained forecasting system, we're hoping to alleviate the, the overheads that happen at this point. So in order to do that, we'll develop a new participant profiler agent. Uh, we'll gather local history uh, from application files like cookies, personal information, location, age and maturity. And we'll look at things like browser history, social media habits and shopping history to build a profile of each user so that we can better identify whether that person is likely to put themselves as risk. Uh, likely to put themselves at risk. Or, or not. My concerns though for the system is, is the new direction unnecessarily invasive? And if it is, is it still AI for good? <laughs>